Hi, this is the Ant Miner Repair or Repair Ant Miner YouTube channel. I guess it's Repair Ant Miner. Um, if you like our contact uh, content after you do this or, or before, please hit subscribe. I'll be doing some more of these. Um, I have a fleet of T17 Ant Miners um, and some S9, some of the older stuff. Um, might get into some newer stuff later, but. Um, today, uh, what this video is about is I've got a miner whose card went down and I've got some diagnostics through the logs. I've got some diagnostics. I, I actually hooked it up to the um, testing unit and I've got some diagnostics from that. And a lot of what it says just doesn't make sense. Um, so so let's, let's dig into this and um, see where it goes. I'll, I'll probably end up taking off some, some heat sinks and looking for some solder balls first thing um, it might mean that we have to replace a chip and I probably won't do it in this sitting but but yet another video also if if you find this content useful and you want to support it I should have a link on the YouTube page for any donations I've invested <laughs> a, a, a small fortune getting it so I could even make videos to share this I feel this is important information to share and a disclaimer I'm not a professional I figured a lot of this stuff out I figured a lot about the hash boards and how they work, and I just wanted to share that information out. So I started this YouTube channel. I hope it's beneficial. All right. So um, what you see right now is is the card not hashing. Um, I, I took a snapshot of this while it wasn't happening. It's my chain number two on this particular T17. I actually have only two cards running. Um, we we actually bought three machines from China, um, and they were just not very good so i've got like three carcasses out there and i'm trying to build them up with all these bad cards so i'm gonna probably take some video of some of this stuff um, sometimes i'm successful with my changes sometimes i'm not um, but hopefully you know you guys watching this might give you some ideas or or might even afford you to, to try it yourself because some of these repairs are easy some of them are are kind of frustrating to tell you the truth but but they take time all right so um this hash board has frequently been going down. Um, I, I, I kept nursing it along, kept rebooting it, run for a day, go down. I have changing temperatures outside. It's in my garage basically and starting to get warm because it's spring. So it's getting a little finicky. So um, w with that, I have a, I had a problem. So I, so I went to study the I went to study the uh, kernel log, which is, I think you go into system and kernel log. Um, so let me show you some snippets out of the kernel log. Um, let me see, I think I can do this. I'm learning my software. So let's try that. Okay, so I, I grabbed some screen cap out of here. This was, this was a part of the log as it was booting up. Um, up above this section is where it, you know it goes to find ASICs and finds 30 ASICs. And on this card, it does find 30 ASICs. It's really happy with that. Um, and then it starts to ramp up the voltage. And this is part of the log where it, um, I've got the newest firmware from AppMiner. And I think what it does is it, it throws it at 760 Hertz and, and, and tests the boards and see what they do. And then it, it figures out what Hertz it wants to run at and then it uh, sets it down. So, so this is the upper setting and, and then it began setting it down, uh, down below here, basically. Um, up above this, it synchronized the temperature sensors, which is a good sign. Um, when it says synchronized, it, it maps their offsets. Basically it assumes they're a, a common temperature and then, then adjusts them from what they're reporting because they could be off. Um, so, so, so it does all that stuff. It found the chip, started things starting up. And then as soon as it started applying voltage, um, I started getting this uh, get temp info read temp sensor failed chain one, which is the board that was going bad. And if you notice, um, if you notice there's sensor two, sensor three, I think before I've even seen sensor one and, and I've seen several reports that, hey, this might be a power supply. And, and indeed this might be, I, I haven't really checked my power supply yet. Um, I've worked on this board before, not in this area particular, but um, when I start seeing multiple sensors reporting, um, 
it it seems like there's something more macro wrong with this card, not just a temperature sensor or a chip. And I'm going to do a whole session on temperature sensors. I've replaced them. I've I figured out how they work, at least on the T17 board. And I'll, I'll go into that. And I've replaced some. And you can buy them, and you can replace them. And um, you just have to know how to solder, or learn how to solder, like I did. Um, so so as it went along, I've had these errors before. This this does not stop the card from turning on and hashing. It just starts losing temperatures and tries to figure out and accommodate that as much as possible. Unless it gets really bad, then it will shut it down for safety. Um, but but where I hit a new error was was basically this. And I have these various errors sometimes. Um, bad clock counter, chain one. ASIC equals five. Um, so, so basically I have a problem with the fifth chip. And this is actually what's stopping the card from running. So the system shuts down. Now the new, the new firmware I've noticed, it'll shut down and, and do a you know check failed retry. And, and my newest firmware will actually start back up. And I, I actually think it compensates for that bad, bad clock counter or does something to it to accommodate it because because usually on the second boot it'll take it and the, the clock counter error will go away uh, this particular time it's not um so i've got a problem um one thing of note when you get this error it's not talking about the fifth asic it's it, it's actually number six so I, I did notice through the testing utility that asic equal five in this particular error message only it's zero based. So you start with chip zero and go up to five. So this is actually the sixth ASIC and I'll show you how to count that. I'm gonna show a video of my board. Hopefully all my video is gonna work that I set up. I've got a real crowded desk. I'll probably try soldering and start the whole place on fire, but um, I'll try to manage all the cables. Um, I'm just setting this up. I'll get it a little more tied down later. So anyway, I, I, I do know this is probably a real problem. I don't think it has anything to do with temperature sensor reads. So I'm still concerned as like what's causing that. Um, I, I really doubt it's the temperature sensors. It could be, but I doubt it. So um, with that, I, I, I have a couple other pieces of data to examine. Um, let me see this one, I think. Okay, so this one is just another snippet. And I don't really understand what the chain nonce is, but um, in the middle of a huge, j just just a huge thing, um, I got this message and there was a couple of them. And if you notice, it was expecting, it wasn't expecting a zero, it was expecting something else. And then it looks like to me, it shut down and and is gonna wait for hash rate protect later. I think what that means is, hey, we're gonna try to restart the miner later and see if it fixes it. Maybe after it warms up from the other cards, something like that. And indeed, later on, I could tell, um, I could see they didn't do a complete reboot, but they shut down the miner process and restarted it, found the ASICs and, and gave the same error. So they shut it back down again. So, so, so I've got this happening. And, and so this doesn't say, which chip it just says hey you know your chain one which is the first board i had in here um the first board i had in here was was bad so so i've got that so um what i did and i'm gonna share yet another screen is i hooked it up to my testing utility and i i use a i use a mac for all the stuff but i i um i have a vmware PC, you have to have a PC to run the testing utility. So um, I couldn't capture it all because the buffer fills up. I need to set the buffer size hard, but let me share that. Uh, let's take a look here. All right, so this is the output from the testing and I'm getting these tons of these errors. And so it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's looking for the nonce and then it starts to do some things. It tells you what ASIC it's working on. See there are some more. Um, register value buff buffer is full. So not sure what's going on there. Um, it also says the temperatures at this point in the thing, the temperatures actually turn negative, which isn't true. 
looks like um, when I was testing this, they were probably reading pretty much the current temperatures. Um, but this is output from that um, tester you can buy from like Zeus Mining or something like that. Um, one thing to note, and I had to learn this, this is kind of nice. This tells you where the temp sensors are. It's ASIC 7, ASIC 9, 24, and 22. And I'll show you guys that later on the on another video, but I'm planning on doing. Um, so so it, it tests each ASIC and it uses something called knots and, and, and it goes through. So, so at the end of this, I'm gonna scroll down. Doesn't look like I'm scrolling, but I'm scrolling. Um, at the end of this, it actually does a map of what chips are good and what chips it's having problems with. <coughs> Excuse me. So right here it says every ASIC required, it was looking for a result of 5376 and not a single one returned it. So it's saying every single chip I have on that board, all 30, you notice this, this tester starts at zero, all 30 chips are bad. And I think that's highly unlikely because it was just actually hashing this morning. So this is the ace, this is the output of the tester, but basically it's saying you can't hash anything because it's not working. So that's the data I have to work with. Um, not sure where to go with this. There, there's a there's a couple things um, I could point out. There's a pick chip on the T17 board and probably all the boards. PIC is a programmable IC. Um, it has code in there and you can flash it. And sometimes when you repair boards, you have to reflash it with, with a known good version of that program and data. I'm kind of wondering, thinking maybe something's wrong with the PIC or maybe a solder ball got in there. We can look at it on video and I'll switch over to that in a second. Um, the only thing I do know is I do believe the error on the counter. And so I think what I want to do with this session, um, I don't know if I can solve this entire problem, but I, I would like to pull off the heat sinks and look at chip number six. The error is on a six five zero based. I'm going to pull off the heat sinks and I'm going to have a look and see if there's solder balls around there. Um, when I picked up the board after I test it, tested it, a heat sink popped off and it looks like I have another problem with another chip that is actually showing, <coughs> it's dry here, it's actually showing um, part of the silicon in there. Um, we're going to take a look at it on the microscope. So I've got two, two video camera set up. One is the soldering part with the heat gun and the other one is actually examining the stuff and I'll, I'll get into the tools I use later. So anyway, we'll go on to it. I'm going to um, actually show you the board right now. Let me see, I need this camera and I will stop sharing the results. Let's see. All right, so I don't have great light. It's probably not focused great, but I have to turn to my left to make sure I'm showing you the right stuff. So the way the 17 board is laid out is up by the power supply. You start at chip zero, or I use, I call it one actually. On, on some of the errors they give you in the log, it's, it's chip one <coughs> in our error. It's actually going to be chip zero. So, so um, if you count forward zero, one, two, it swings around and does this S thing. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so this chip is saying that there's a counter error. So the error could be the chip before the counter goes through or the chip receiving the counter on the other end. So, so what we're going to do is probably take these three guys off and take a look at it. And then um, as soon as I get the microscope video up, this heat sink fell off and you probably can't see it on the video and I'll show it to you much clearer on the microscope. Looks like this chip is trashed. Um, I have a micrometer here. There's some testing you can do with resistances on the T17 and I think <clears throat> the S17 boards too. So um, we'll, we'll, take, we'll take a look at those. Some people, so, some people mark 
some people mark these before they take them off. Maybe they can remember they did it. So, I mean, I think it's good practice, but unfortunately I've done so much on my boards about everything is marked because I don't even think I've had that one off. Um, on this board, I think I fixed clock 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, so somewhere over here and, you know, I'm learning how to straighten out heat sinks. Sometimes I'm not perfect. So um, what I have is a soldering station. I'll, I'll go through the equipment I use a little bit later on a different video, but I have a heat gun. Um, basically, let me see if I can show it here. So this is my heat gun and I can adjust temperatures and I've got a nozzle on it just so it's, um, just so, um, it hits the chip. I'm gonna get a drink, sorry. Um, if you have it too broad, you heat up the other chips, um, you take the chance of, of damaging some of the other components. So I have a couple nozzles that came with these. One, um, let me see if I can find it. This little tiny guy right here, I use it to replace the little resistors and capacitors. You probably can hardly see them on the video. I'll show them to you on the mic. So, so you wanna minimize the airflow. So. Um, I'll, I probably won't, I'll probably just do a soldering session and I'm, I'm definitely not an expert. Um, I've had to learn all this stuff and it's been an interesting journey. I've screwed up enough stuff that, that I, I think I'm getting better, but I may not be. So if you know what you're doing, um, please contribute um, for sure. So I'm gonna start this guy up. Um, it has a variable temperature. The way these boards are set up, the actual chips are soldered to the board using a 186 degree melting point solder. And the, the heat sinks are on 131 degree melting solder. So in theory, you heat this up, it'll melt the top solder without pulling the chip out. Um, what I was doing before was heating up the chip and I was in a hurry tugging on it and I would pull it off the second the solder started to melt and sometimes I would damage the chip. You definitely wait till the solder melts on these and um, it should come off easy. And you try to lift it as straight off as you can because you can cause solder balls and solder might slush over the side and, and give you some grief. So, so let's, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna do this right hand. So it's gonna look kind of weird. So I'm gonna turn on, the, turn on the air gun. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. The microphone's off there. So my air gun's definitely working. And you definitely need a pair of pliers, which I don't have. Andy, I should. Not oh, good enough. Not that pair of pliers. I have lots of pairs of pliers here, so I guess I'll have to use them. So I basically am shooting pretty forceful air, about 350 degrees. So zero, one, two, three, four, four, five, and six. So I'll start with this guy right here. I try to get in there between the fins and just let it warm up and heat up. Yeah, I guess I should follow my own marks here. It takes a little while. Of course, if you sat here and heated it, never did it, you might actually get down to the chip and you might actually heat it up and melt it. So, so I just kind of, I mean, I barely move it because if the solder is melted, you'll, it'll just pick up. And when, when it gets warmed up, it'll just pick up and you won't damage anything. So meantime, I'll dig around in my piles of heat sinks on my desk and see if I can find these aren't the right um, tweezers, really. I have a wider set that I like. Maybe that's them right there. There you go. That's them right there. Some of the other stuff I keep around, because I'm going to look at these chips, I'm going to look for solder balls, is uh, alcohol and Q-tips, a lot of that. This guy's taking a while to heat up. I'm going to point it down just a little bit. Usually, I kind of come in from this direction. And it flows through, especially when I take this one off, it starts preparing the heat for that one. There we go. See how easy it lifted off? Um, that's what you want. So don't touch these dudes, they're kind of hot. So I'm gonna move on to this one at that angle. That's the chip in question, like five? No, it's zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's the chip in question right there. And we'll have to have a look at it. Just with my eyeball, I don't see anything wrong with it, but. Um, my eyes aren't that good. So we'll look at it in the microscope and see how it is. So just give it another second. We'll take these three off. So 
So I try to avoid replacing chips at all costs, but it is necessary sometimes. Um, I test resistance, I test the voltage under the tester, and I can get into that if that came off. Okay, last one, and then we can probably flip video cameras, um, start looking at this stuff. And I'm gonna go in later on all the videos on some of these lines. And there's several places you can test this chip with resistances besides these test points down here, or at least one other one I've discovered, and that's the power supply for some of the imports. So um, I know the S17 boards have the same stuff. And I think if you use the same ASIC, which most people do, um, I actually think it uh, is the same stuff. Okay, good. All right, so I'm gonna lay those guys aside. I'm gonna shut off my potter. I'm gonna do probably this. This board's a little warm. So I have a, when you set it down like that, these puppies stick. So I have a microscope camera. Just a second, let me change that over. Let me turn that light on. I'm going to turn off the video for a sec. You guys know my name. See here. I'm just getting the video set up. I'll turn it on. I don't want to be that low. Find the chip. Sorry about the blurred video. Get used to all this technology. So come on in. Kind of embarrassing. I can't get it to focus. But I'm working on it. Yeah, we're getting close. Boy, that's really close up on that chip, though. Let me see if I can get a I don't think so. This thing's going to really buzz in, isn't it? All right. Well, we're going to examine each one of these chips. And I'm going to examine. So the first chip is the one before. I'm kind of using the camera for this. It won't make you sick. That's the heat sink. And we come off the heat sink. All right. The R check address chip is right here. So this is the output of zero, one, two, three, four. So this could be affecting the clock counter. So, so you want to kind of look at these. I have a needle and I, have a, I kind of like using this, this needle to poke around in here, but these look actually pretty good. I notice sometimes the solder over goes over do you see how I picked up that piece of solder or that stuff sometimes the heat sinks will cause problems if I flick it you can flick it away and the problem is I have no idea where that's going but sometimes when you put the heat sink back on it slides and pushes the solder over and I'm not doing this this doesn't take very it's not very hard but in some cases maybe the solder reaches down and touches this. So, so I definitely will go through this chip and clean all these guys up so they're not, and you don't want to leave the solder laying around, you want to remove it. So, so I'm going to do that off camera, but you want to look for that. It, it kind of just like a, a roof over the top of that, which is, which is kind of crazy. Um, the other thing you could look is just the top of the chip, and I don't really have it in focus, but, but on the top of the chip, and I'll show you um, this has good solder and everything. So, so that's chip four. And then it, it basically runs up through, those are the test ports and it runs up through and finds. This is the one that's having the clock counter problems. So let's have a look here. I almost see a solder ball there. Um, we'll take a look at it. And I, I use a different tool sometimes to look close up. You see that guy right there? That might be a solder ball. Um, 
it's hard to look at this angle. I think what I'll do is I'll spin it around. So excuse me. Uh, let's see. I'm not used to working with the microscope. Holy, I just got it. I guess this is a Lewis Rossman special, and I kind of bought what somewhat he had. Not that I'm trying to be him at all. So this is the same one. So I'm not trying to focus these guys. No, that's not the same one. This is the same one. Okay, so that's those. I thought I saw a solder ball sitting in there. Let's take a look. Right there. So that's definitely a solder ball. Um, and I want I want to try something. I don't know what it looks like on the microscope, but I usually keep alcohol and you're seeing me move around because I move it on the table. I'm gonna pour a little bit of alcohol and use a cotton swab on that guy. So that solder ball is pretty small. I'm not saying it couldn't cause a problem, but usually the ones I've seen, I had another video on here that they get pretty big. Um, in theory, that guy could have been grounding against the chip, but what I'm gonna do, a lot of times you'll see better and I'm not sure I can shine the proper light. I just dab some alcohol in there and I'll see if I can do this. So I get it in the light. I don't think I can. Um, the solder, the, the uh, alcohol, see how it's fluid in there? You can kind of see a lot of tiny stuff. Those are actually solder balls too. Um, so are those. Those might be bubbles. I'm not sure. I'd have to take a look at it. Um, I don't use a microscope for this. I use a, a handheld LCD microscope for this. So that guy right there is real. So let's just go ahead and take him out. And I'll try to do it with a microscope sitting on top of this. So here's my pen. See the alcohol just sitting there on magnify stuff? I kind of like that. So I just moved the pin in behind him. And there he is. Somewhere. Oh, he's stuck to the pin, so I'm removing him. Okay. So I really don't think that's probably enough to cause our counter error, but you never know. All right, so let's move on to the other side. And unfortunately, we're kind of looking down off the shelf. So I'm going to flip this guy around again. Uh, it's kind of hard to look for solder balls with a microscope, but here this is. Um, you see some solder balls here. They're not hurting anybody. It's uh, these dudes right there. So you should pick them up. It looks like they're stuck in some flux. Looks like there's some flux. Looks like I may have had some work on this chip or someone left some flux. The alcohol definitely does it. So, so basically I'll look for the overhanging solder. I've fixed stuff like that before. See how I'm flicking it away? Um, so I will spend some time and I'll clean up this chip and see if I can get the solder off there. I don't think it looks as bad as the ones I've seen. Okay. So that's the chip in question. And then I'm gonna do the following chip. If, if you take the chip and its output basically, and you follow it around, you get to this other chip over here. If I can get there. Let's see, best way to do this. Uh, you are here. What is that? That's the heat sink. So the chip probably the power resistors right there. So let's have a look at that guy. I see a solder ball, but um, I'm not of the, I'm, I'm trying to focus this better for you guys. I'm not sure I can. So, so this guy has a solder ball right there. Um, I'm not sure, I'm gonna take it off. You don't want them floating around on the board. I'm not sure that can chart cause a short um, but it might. So let's now take a look at the chips. It looks like I'm just kind of sliding through these guys. Look at that. See that solder ball right there? Look at that. Now that one is a real candidate for causing problems. So I'm going to reach around the lens right there. That guy should not be there. Um, let's see if I can get in it this way. That one's a tough one to reach. I'll try left-handed. I'm not left-handed, but we're gonna try the pin. So we need to get him out of there. So I kind of dig in behind the chip. There, pushed him out. So it looked like to me, he might've been sitting on some flux in between those. 
There he is right there. So I'm going to grab him and remove him. So that definitely could have been shorting some stuff out. I'm sorry for the autofocus. This board doesn't sit flat. I'm just figuring all this stuff out. So that was a good find. So I wonder that particular area of the chip. Let me see. What is that? That's so in the mode that this chip is in. These actually, I'm not sure this guy's used, but these guys are power coming in. And then I forgot, I'm gonna throw a chip diagram up and we're gonna to try to match some of these because I've learned about the board and where these lines go and what they service. Let me, so to make sure I got that, I'm gonna do my alcohol trick and hopefully clean some of that flux up. Uh -oh. See if we'd see anything else in there. I see some shiny thing in there, but it looks like the big solder ball is gone. Those tiny guys, unless there's just a ton of them. Yeah, yeah you, you, you kind of wonder, I kind of wonder sometimes you got these little solder balls kind of laying in there and if they band together and touch. Um, I, you know, I'm definitely not operating in the clean room here, but I might take the pin and just kind of pull them out of there and see those guys lined up. Um, sometimes I've used solder paste and people use solder paste. So it looks like there's there's little tiny minute solder balls in here that the alcohol. I'm trying to reach in by the microscope and just pull those dudes out. Yeah, I don't think there's enough to short. I have seen them where somebody used solder paste and they just like that, except way worse. You can kind of see somebody had some solder paste around here and all the solder balls left over. Yeah, that's a better look. Um, they're real tiny, but if you had enough, they would pile up around there and they would short across there really intermittently and really low voltage, I think, or low signal. Um, what I'll do with this is I'm going to take the alcohol swab basically to, to move them around if they're not too stuck. And I'll try to do that on here. Let me see. I just, I, I kind of throw it in the pins and force the solder. If they're loose, they'll move and I'll just keep working them down until I get them out. And then I'll take a, a clean swab and pick up, try to get all the stuff out of there so it doesn't stay on the board. So there's a sizable guy. It looks big on the video, but if you think him spanning across the two, I mean, you can think about the size of this one right here. I mean, here's the head of a pin. <laughs> so it's really hard to get him to move. But um, I flicked him away. I, I put him in there. So he's kind of out of there. So in general, um, that was a bad solder ball. That very well could have caused, I don't know about the clock. So, so what happens down on this side of the chip and um, down, on, down on these ports, you actually have one of the power supplies feeds power in these two lines. These two lines aren't used. Let me get my pin back in here. You see they just wrap around here on the circuit board. So they've got these two ports shunted to each other. And then I think you have, I'm not positive, but like address one, address two, address three. So if that ball was kind of in this area, you could have been messing with the communications all up and down maybe, I, I don't know. And then you have your five test points kind of along in the middle here, which is um, there's clock, there's there's RO, they call it, there's there's CI, which is, I think, that uh, something in, there's BI, and then there's uh, one other one. Um, we'll discuss those later. I, you see, I'm just moving those things around, right? So there's a lot of kind of garbage in there, but none of them enough to charge it, tr uh, cause a short, in my opinion. Um, all right. So the last thing I want to show you is that one chip I pulled off that I, I suspect might also be a problem. And this, this, let me see if I can find it. This would be a chip change maybe. So this guy just looks fried. Let me see if I can clean, clean up the view. Put come up some. I am like up all the way. I used to have a really clear view of all this stuff. It's really close up, almost too close up. Excuse me for if I could get it. It's like I'm not high enough. I used to get higher on this guy. All right, well, I'll go in and make your view clear. There's a nice resistor. So 
I'll work on that. I'm actually on this um, helping hands thing. Maybe I can lower some down here. Let's see what I can do here. How's that? Yeah, there we go. Okay, this is the fried chip, I think. And um, so, so I'm, I mean, it looks like it got hot. What, what you're seeing basically is I've done something to this chip. I've, I dab a little flux when I put the, the heat sink back on, um, but this looks like it's, that's just like flux that's been hot and kind of sticks. But what I'm concerned about is this area over here. If you look at it right in the light, it kind of has this glint of light, um, like it's actually gotten through the surface and, and um, gotten, in, gotten into the silicone. So um, I may, I'm gonna test the resistance on these chips and I'm gonna go through kind of a clinic on how I test resistances. These guys, all um, three of, two of the lines always have very similar resistance and I, I use it to measure the initial measurement of when I replace a chip, if it's successful, it's not a sure proof thing, but it is. But um, I'm gonna measure him. I'm probably gonna put him on and measure the voltage coming in and out of him on the test ports. And I'll measure the voltage that's feeding the these lines right over here, or these lines, I'm not sure which, either these or these. Um, so I'll, I'll take that out. But um, unfortunately on these videos, I can't take you to the tester show you the tester, come back, resolder. Um, this, this could go on just to give you an idea for several hours before I get this thing fixed. But um, this is the initial start. You see all this dirt in here? Um, I would actually clean this up with alcohol and check out these two, but they look pretty clean um, for that. So um, let me see, I think I covered everything I wanted in this video. Um, I wish I could answer back. Maybe I'll throw in the comments, hey, that was the problem. Was that solder ball we found? I think it's highly likely that was a pretty bad solder ball in a bad place. I will let you know because I want to put this card back in service as possible. So um, I'll let you know um, in the comment section on the video. So if you enjoyed what you saw, I want to see more, want to help support me. I, I think I'll have a Bitcoin re receive address down there and I will have a PayPal address. I'm not begging for money. I'm not trying to be rich. I'm not going to be rich doing this. I'm just trying to share some information and uh, any help you can give would be great so I can support that cause. And uh, thank you for watching. And I think that's the video.